We wanted to install an aluminum arch on the back of Nine Lives to support our solar panels, our radar, and to act as davits to support a dinghy. But since I have neither the tools nor the skills to weld aluminum, I set detailed measurements to nautical creations. Okay, my task today is to unpack these two side pieces for the custom arch that we're gonna install on the back of the boat and begin marking it up so I can cut it to fit. Okay, being a custom handmade arch, I fully expect that there are some variances between the two sides, but there are a few critical areas that I need to make sure are absolutely identical. So I taped these together back to back and squared them off up against here. So these, these are the back arches. They're sitting up there in an identical fashion and it's critical that the back legs be exactly the same length, and in this case, they are. So that is my reference point around which I'm going to install this whole thing, the back arch. But you could see there are some variances, uh, imperfections, if you will. With these absolutely squared off here, you can see these two front legs are slightly different in how far apart they are from the back legs. And I'll be able to bend that a little bit to take up some of the difference, but it won't be perfect. They'll actually still end up a bit off. And that's okay, as long as I know to expect that. And likewise, of course, then this cross piece is actually slightly longer than this cross piece because it has to be to made up with a slightly wider hoop. <laughs> and there's other little things like Back here, this extra support. Notice on this one, it's mounted a little bit lower than this one, you know, half inch lower, right? So they're not identical. These cross pieces are not identical. And these are close, but still this one's a little higher than this one. Right? So some variances, but nothing I can't really work around. And again, absolutely critical for this particular install is that the back legs be straight and that they be of identical length. These are the bases that the legs will mount to. Aluminum. The tubing will slip over this and then I can either use a set screw or epoxy or I don't know, I might elect to raise it into position. I don't know, we'll see when the time comes. I just wanna make sure that these are all identical and I think they are. These don't appear to be, well, maybe they are handmade, but I really just wanna make sure that they're the same size. I don't know why that one has a sock. <laughs> But they all look good. I'm not worried about that. Because I'm not mounting this arch on a flat surface with the legs absolutely parallel to one another, I specified a few dimensions oversize so that I could custom cut it down and fit it appropriately. So the front legs, as delivered, are oversized by quite a healthy margin. I took the starboard side of the arch and mocked it up so that the rear leg would fall approximately where it's intended to be mounted. And I could then measure how much to cut off of the front leg. Once I had measured and marked the front leg for the appropriate length, it was a simple matter of using a metal cutting blade on a chop saw to cut it to length. Then, to confirm that my measurements were accurate, I took the mounting feet and taped them into the bottoms of the arch legs. Then I could position the side of the arch and mock up its future mounting location and verify that my modification to the front leg was accurate. So that's just about right. It might be a half inch higher in the front hoop than the rear hoop. I can adjust that by cutting down the front a little bit. So I think we're okay. Okay, I know the rear legs are reliable as far as the dimensions go. So, I make sure that they're aligned. Should be able to pull the front legs together, take a halfway decent spot to mark off and make these approximately the same. So, they'll be the same length. Obviously, this one will be mounted a little further forward than this one. I guess that's okay. There. 
Since I was able to validate that my cut on the starboard side of the arch was accurate, it was a simple matter to modify the port side of the arch to match. Okay. See, that's pretty good. Either this arch did not come with hardware or I just didn't find it. But for now, I had to use my surplus stainless here and uh, I put together 16 screw and nut combos. Some are Phillips head, some are flat head. It's okay. This is just for temporarily getting this thing installed and then I can go back and replace all of them with matching screws. On the port side of the boat, the mounting pad goes somewhere around here. So clearly this Hubble phone TV interface is gonna have to go. And I've never used it, never plan on using it. It's coming out. Okay, I'm going to remeasure this whole assembly. I think I'm going to assemble it as is, measure it and then figure out how much I need to cut off the center span so that it'll fit appropriate in here uh, on the feet as mounted here. And I have a feeling the back feet will have to be repositioned a little bit. I also ordered the arch so that the overall span was quite a few inches wider than what I really needed. Doing so gave me the opportunity to then custom fit this arch to the intended location Okay, let's see. So we're looking at 131 and 5 sixteenths. That is a difference of 8 and 5 sixteenths inches between the front hoop there and this distance here. So I need to cut off the top 4 and 5 30 seconds off each side. Okay, easy enough. So it turns out, in the properly mounted position, the hoop was 8 and 5 16 inches too wide. I disassembled the components for the top center span, and off each of the six tubes, I cut off 4 and 5 30 seconds of an inch to properly narrow the arch. Once properly cut down to size, it was time for yet another test fit. ceiling the back panel just so I could see where I'm drilling and I also need of course access so I can put the nuts on these bolts and we can see here that's just a bolt poking through the foot going horizontally and the side there and amongst this mess right there that's the hole I drilled the other day that's going to need to be filled <laughs> There's the big hole from the cable TV and telephone service that I don't need. Just covered over in tape. But anyway, that's the general vicinity and uh, access is not too bad. Okay, I've got two bolts, screws, whatever, through here. I'm going to very temporarily put the backing plate on here as everything falls down on my head. Nice, nice. And I'm just going to put these two nuts on here, but not cinch them down with their nylocks. I don't have anybody on the other side of the bolt anyway. Let's just see if I can... This way, that foot can no longer go swimming. And I'll of course be taking this off when I finalize the placement of everything because I'm going to want to put some 5200 or 4200 on the other side. I'm obviously going to want to drill all four holes, yada yada yada. Same thing on this side. Less nonsense up there. Here's that bolt just kind of pushed through. It's a little janky right now. But back here, let's see. Yep, there we go. Two of four bolts plus an extra hole because you know 
I make lots of mistakes. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna need a little bit of work. Make that flat, but not right now. Right now, we are just securing it so that that foot cannot end up in the river. Get on now. Good enough for now. I temporarily bolted the mounting feet to the rear of the transom for the rear hoop and to the insides of the cockpit walls for the front hoop. Then I could do yet another test fit to make sure that the arch fit properly with the feet bolted in their soon to be final positions. Still looks awfully square, but now I've confirmed that the top is narrower than the bottom by a little bit, by about two inches. I think that'll do it. Now I just need to mark where to drill the holes for the bolts that will hold everything together. All of the individual aluminum sections of the arch were packed up and brought to my home garage where I could, as accurately as possible, drill out all the holes through the tubes and ultimately bolt the entire assembly together. I also built some very simple davit arms out of Schedule 80 aluminum tubing, which for its intended use is far stronger than the Schedule 40 used throughout the rest of the arch. You can tell by the thickness of the tubing wall. I was concerned that I'd be putting a fair amount of additional stress on the areas where the mounting feet were bolting to the hull. So I mixed up some epoxy, and at each of the four mounting locations, I laid in three layers of fiberglass cloth and three layers of fiberglass mat, simply to strengthen the area and to distribute the load. All right, today I'm going to attach these feet for the arch. I have them uh, all modified so that they fit appropriately. For instance, this one has a bit of a chamfered edge so that it can fit into this uh, kind of rounded area. Uh, I've already drilled the holes out through my new reinforced fiberglass. And they should be approximately <laughs> lined up, so we'll see. I've got my little bolts here, stainless steel fasteners, and I'm going to use these to hold these uh, pieces in place while I uh, stick them down with 5200, and then I'll tighten them up on the back side. And I'll let the 5200 cure before uh, I come out here with the rest of the arch and attach it to the feet. What I want to do is put it on here so that when I pull it tight, it flattens out. I'm going to make sure that I go around the entire perimeter and go around the holes and then put some on the inside. And we'll see. For all I know, that's way too much. <laughs> we will find out. Make sure it 
this squishes out a little bit on the perimeter. Here's my cap. And the same thing here. Get it all around the holes. I don't want water finding its way in. thing holding it back when I actually tighten it. Now, the 200 fast cure still takes quite a while to cure, so there's plenty of time to clean up any mess that we've created. So I like to wipe the excess away, and then you can go after it. It seems like when it's still wet, acetone does a nice job of cleaning it up too. That's enough cleaning for the moment. I will take another pass at that first. Let's go in the boat. Tighten everything down. And behind every foot, I have a plate that goes on the inside. Washer. lock washer and then a nut and I prefer to use nylock nuts because they tend to not vibrate free and when I have Virginia to help me I will tighten these nuts down she can hold back on the other end of the bolt And that's it. Virginia came by to help me out, so we tightened up the nuts on the mounting feet and then installed the completed arch onto the back of Nine Lives. Like everything that I do, nothing's quite precise. Holes are a little bit crooked, which is fine. tension on it so it's really freaking hard to drive these screws through the holes. We'll get there. How to get it through that hole? Jeez, I can't find the hole.